is now in progress, and we've um, met the open law of conformity by posting the agenda in three places, right? Yes. And on the website? Yes. And emailed to interested parties? Yes. So we can continue. Um, I'm going to start off with the prior meetings minutes from August 8th, and they look pretty representative of what happened then. It's a good so, new meeting. <laughs> yeah, I would move to um, adopt those. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. There is. And we have um, some guests here, Nick um, Darbla. Yes. How do you call that? Yep. And um, Catherine and Vic's not here. But, He's coming um, later. He's coming later. So yeah, well, I guess Around next year, um, this is um, on the first um, topic under new businesses, the Rogers Peak Access discussion and um, the, 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 your, your potential request for uh, improving of the legal trail to use it as a driveway. But um, there's, there's um, I guess, the several different options that you're weighing about how to access the the property. I guess I will give my um, understanding summary of it first, and then you can correct me if I'm wrong. But he's bought an um, interestingly shaped piece of property that is, um, <laughs> it touches on, there's a picture of it in here. I think. Listen. No, that's not that one. It's in here. It um, touches on Route 100, which is what allowed it to be probably subdivided in the first place. It's really um, an unusual lot. There is some creative um, <laughs> lot makers back in the day, <laughs> I suppose. Um, and this is bisected. Well, I don't know if you call it bisected. It cuts. It's cut through by a legal trail um, connecting Jerusalem Hill Road and South Hollow Lane. And that's uh, where most people are familiar with that. Um, it's jeepable, but a little bit rough. And um, Nick's question was, to what extent could he improve that legal trail as a potential access to a home site? Now, the home you've decided on a home site now, which is kind of on the height of the land, close to the height of that road at its highest point. Is that right? right? Yeah. And. Um, so there were um, extensively four options that I see of how to access that. One from below at Jerusalem Hill Road, one from above from South Hollow Lane, which would both involve um, permission and use of the legal trail as a driveway, which is questionable. Um, the other possible way in would be to negotiate with the um, neighboring property owner. He gets almost touches Bethel Mountain Road, but doesn't. And that would be a, it's probably a, um, a relatively long drive into the spot. And in looking at the maps the other day, um, what looks to me like the most practical way would be from the top of Jerusalem Hill Road, but not using the legal trail heading kind of doing a dog leg off to the south and back up, looking at the topographic map, that looked like a, the most gradual approach to your potential house site. So that's um, that was my thought. I hadn't talked with you about that. I don't know if you've investigated that or not with that. I haven't walked that land. Help, help me understand what you're referencing. I'm referencing, um, like, so if you get to the top of Jerusalem Hill Road right. and where the um, big um, clearing is, landing up. right, and then there's a, the road that cuts off to the right, if you travel Tor down that, just Hall, right, towards Trail, Hooper right. Hollow, uh, just past that first um, um, wet spot where there's, I don't think there's a bridge there, it's just a crossing. And looking at the topographical map, if you then yeah. started working your way up, it looks like it was a relatively gradual, you know, looking at the topographical lines, that would be, um, that was, and that would be um, pretty much that's on your land. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. much it is. <laughs> well, that from the, yeah, it is pretty, <laughs> pretty for much. the most part, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and we're looking roughly at maps. So that was, um, that is my my take, and I'll let you fill in some other other thoughts and, sure. and you know it's um well maybe I'll maybe I'll just uh, introduce myself quickly. Yeah. Um, Nick Darvaloff from uh, Massachusetts. My wife Jill and I we looked at land in Vermont. 
we're sort of of that age where we're thinking about what's what's next as, as the word retirement comes into view. And um, as we thought about Vermont, Rochester loom large because I've been coming here for about 30 years visiting the a childhood friend with uh, Nick Gato, who's married to Pam Hubbard, and so we've been going to the Hubbard Place on North Hollow for, for what seems like forever. Um, and uh, was sort of excited to see this parcel, and uh, we certainly had hoped that we would potentially wrap up some of the, the uh, or at least figure out some of these issues before we had to sort of pull the trigger and actually uh, close on the property, but competitive buyers emerged and that wasn't that wasn't an option so here we are um, I mean I think that the the three access options that I've put forward and you raised the fourth um, all have their pros and cons obviously the the, the, the big plus with uh, either South Hollow or Jerusalem Hill is that you are you're leveraging the legal trail as, as, as access to a driveway that would then come off the legal trail Mm -hmm. And um, we've actually uh, cut uh, a driveway there tentatively as basically as a way to get into test pits. So that's, that's sort of as far as we've gotten thus far. Um, and the test pits look, look promising, so that home site looks, looks like it might, have been a, might be a good choice. How far to the south of the legal trail was the prospective home site? Ex pretty much exactly what you see on the map. It is that it is that uh, peak or plateau. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying how? You know, I'm just curious how far off the legal trail, like how much more of the driveway? Would two, be? I would say 300 feet, mm -hmm. maybe 400. Yeah, it's, it's but a, it's to the it east. Be visible. It's to the east. east. Right. To the east. It's uphill. Yeah. Well, so if you, yeah, if you look yeah. at that, if you look at that access options, mm -hmm. it still climbs. Still climbs off the peak. Yeah. yeah. So, so you'll know that the, 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 and be quite quiet and secluded and so forth. So that's that's really the goal. It's certainly not to develop houses anywhere near anywhere nearby. And um, the notion is, if if, if, it, if it were possible for the uh, for us to improve the legal trail such that we could get to the driveway, that would be that would be ideal. Um, June, as per the, the note I sent, I, I sent actually to Julie. Mm -hmm. It must be Julie. We all see that. We, uh, I mean, I, I did a bunch of digging and just sort of looked at uh, other towns and mm -hmm. saw, to see what, 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 what they allowed and didn't allow. And it seems like, it seems like there's some common language. So somewhere along the line, there are all, a number of towns are borrowing common language that do seem to allow legal trail improvement. but. Uh, the, the, the purpose here tonight is simply to sort of respectfully ask if, if, if you might consider the improvement of the trail without reclassification. Because I think that petitioning and reclassification would be a, a concern. And that would for, be a, a much more significant improvement that yeah. would be required. To and I think that, the, that, you know, our view is that, uh, um, you know, the legal trail is, is, a, is a public way and we would be improving some portion of it and it would continue to be a legal trail with public access just that some part of it would be a little a little easier going than it once was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's And you'll be living there full time? You were talking this year. Um, frankly yeah. we don't know. I mean we've talked about selling our, our home in Massachusetts. There may be grandchildren on the way that will probably be Massachusetts based and I, I think it's unlikely we wouldn't have something there. But uh, the notion that that we would Spend a heck of a lot of time in Vermont is, is absolutely on, is on the agenda. Okay, so the agenda. Well, I mean, improving the trail also means that you would have to keep the the trail and your driveway open. Um, I don't think access. if we cut a driveway off the trail, I don't think we'd keep that open. I don't think we'd gate it. But no, in other words, the legal trail would have to stay open. Of course, it's a legal public. Trail. Okay. 
So check with your insurance company and, and make sure that they're okay with that because right. you wouldn't have access to fire or emergency services. Um, get a big oil tank if you're heating with oil. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> they, they won't go up there in the winter. So it's, just make sure the house can sustain itself in the winter without services being readily available to get to you. I think the goal would be uh, to have an ability to plow to the house. Right, that's what I'm asking. You'd be, you, would, you would maintain that trail in the winter. We would maintain From access the end to of the Jerusalem house in, all in the, the winter. I'm not, I'm not sure that would be winter number one. I mean, there won't be a house there winter <laughs> number one, which is this coming winter. Mm -hmm. uh, next next year's an open question, but yes, eventually mm -hmm. it, we, would, we would maintain access to it. Okay. Snow zero. travelers use that in the winter. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that would be kind of like on Cooper Run when they improved that, where they now ride on the right. side there. Yeah. yeah. On the side, or, or if it made sense to cut a, uh, a, a another trail for Vast, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an open possibility as well. In other words, accommodate, accommodate those winter travelers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a way that mm -hmm. made sense for all. Because it's, uh, it's noted that the trails are for recreational purposes in our town plan. So we don't want to cut off any recreational services on that trail. Right. I don't know if we can rule on something like this tonight anyway. No, this is uh, informational. Yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, and really there is, you know, it is up to the select board to have the discretion to, you know, right. allow or not then. You're right in looking at different towns, there, there's the full spectrum of, you, there know, are. you know, go to town or, or, or no, no cars allowed at all. So yep. um, yeah, and I, I, did, I did yeah. bump into one or two that said so, but yeah. Yeah. I, the ones I forwarded were, of course, the ones that said yeah. improvement allowed. And your dwelling will be uh, off-grid? It will be off-grid. I actually, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I run the commercial half of a solar company in Massachusetts. So you'd probably go solar. So, <laughs> probably, yeah. as opposed to William, yes. Well, your choice of how, how your road comes in, if yes. you were ever thinking about bringing telephone power, AC phone, no, or I think, like that. No, I think uh, it'll be solar plus storage, and uh, mm -hmm. it looks like it looks like uh, satellite internet might, might just squeak in in, in in the nick of time. To well, you're, up, you're high up mm -hmm. there, so yeah. you yeah. should have a good signal. So, Terry, have you got um, concerns from the safety, the fire safety aspect of stuff? I mean, we have challenging roads all over the town. Right. You know. So, I mean, it'd be like any other road in the wintertime. I couldn't guarantee you we'd get a truck in. Right. Right. We've, we've talked about it. And, uh, you know, we'd want to know if it was a fire. I'd want to know who you had sort of doing maintenance so we could have the ability to call them. Sure. Even for an ambulance, if you were there, you know, yep. the ambulance doesn't run chains either. So they aren't going to risk. I don't want to have to go up there and dig them out either. <laughs> but, I mean, we had a lot of driveways, so it's kind of hard. Yep. Uh, no. Is your intention to just build one property there? Yes. I mean, our intention is to, is to build one home site and uh, keep keep it very nicely buffered. Yeah. That's the whole point. We actually live in a in a, in a uh, fairly uh, I'll say sparsely populated town north of Boston. Right. Um, but it's it's loud and mm -hmm. it's Boston is Boston is not far from you. And yeah. my wife and I both very much enjoy sort of the solitude of, of the nature that that site provides. So the, the goal of the, the intent is absolutely not to have... Anything. That's your goal, but what's the next owner's goal? You have to look at it that way too. Are you creating something that... And we have to service that off a trail? You know, fire subdivisions and all that. You can't... How do we look at that? Do we look at that? But it is true that once that trail is improved, it's it's probably not going to get unimproved mm -hmm. in the future. That's it's a, a step into um, 
the future. There's no question that we need more tax base in town, so we welcome growth, growth your desire to, to build and, and, and contribute to that. It's just um, finding the balance of, um, you know, the that trail as a as a public resource and if it's um, to what extent that's that's it will be changing the nature of it for sure um, is it necessarily bad I don't know if I would say that um, but it's not just a quick jump and say sure go right. ahead and build right. that, that trail you know but, um, we have um, one um, person that abuts that trail do you have any input on this there but you know uh, it so happens i have given this some thought and i've talked with nick uh, numbers of time and um in, in and and uh and and i um and uh, and i mean it when i say that uh, you know i i um am not my purpose is not um <clears throat> to prevent Nick from uh, building his house, um, uh, but my 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 concern is that the select board eventually makes the right decision in how to utilize this legal trail um, in terms of setting a precedent for this legal trail use and future le legal trail usage uh, for the next you know, a uh, parcel um, when that a different legal trail, you know, traverses. Um, so just philosophically, you know, what's the right, what's the right way for the town to think about its legal trails um, and how they should be used? Should they be used um, primarily, uh, well, as a, the, to quote the town plan, which the three of you adopted two years ago exclusively for recreational purposes, uh, n not for vehicular traffic. Um, so, um, you know, so I mean, it's a philosophical question. And then, as Frank was referencing, you know, um, it's not just Nick's application, um, his family situation could change, there could be a new buyer. Uh, in the near long long future or near future, um, circumstances can change, um, and this road traverses two other properties. Uh, I have a quarter mile of property along this road. Uh, Patsy DeSantis has a quarter mile along this road, um, and the balance of Nick's property as well. So. Um, you, you know, I, I mean, I, so my concern is that the select board just make the right decision for this road, you know, for the long term. Uh, I, I, I have to be honest, I'd be most happy if nothing changes past my driveway. Um, but I'm, you know, um, you know, I, I'm not saying that that is the way it, you know, I'm not here to fight for that yeah. or against that. Um, but um, but there are there are considerations. I think the uh, the idea that you know that you you know uh, threw out tonight, um, where you could um, uh, reclassify a portion of the road on the Jerusalem side um, uh, onto well, Nick's that, property that comes to within just hundred. No. Yeah, very. Sh yeah, very it's short a time. You know, you could even extend it thirty feet onto his property, so that he would then have legal frontage on two sides of a town road. So for future subdivision, um, that would be a benefit, because um, right now his only legal frontage is on Route One Hundred. One Hundred. Yeah. Um, so there'd be a a benefit, uh, which is an interesting concept. Um, and maybe it's something you, you know, never thought about, and that's swinging the driveway around on that far side. No. Um, anyway, um, I, I personally think that just uh, dolling up, <laughs> do, you know, doing a minimal improvement to the, this is just my own personal opinion, do, just doing a minimal, minimal improvement 
to the Meagle Trail, um, especially all the way to the height of land, is if I <laughs> I won't say it, um, is the, the least best option. Um, it's just my personal. Is this trail uh, on the mountain biking trail map or no. slated no. to be no. on a map? No. No. I, I so it's you. just a snowmobile club that uses that trail? Yeah. And, and uh, unofficially it's used. Unofficially, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's just a town trip. So it's a mile. It, it, I've been on it with a it, So it's a mile. It's a mile from my driveway to the height of land, of, of where Nick has proposed this. So <laughs> the snowmobiles now would have to come from um, uh, the the whose driveway do they come out on now? Uh, very well, Terry's new driveway. <laughs> From Terry's new driveway, yeah, so it'd be a, a, a mile and a third uh, on a plowed road now to get to the top. Well, I guess um, I don't know to what extent have you had any communication with the the landowners that block you from. Um, Camp Brook Road, Bethel Mountain Road. Um, I've had a com I've had conversations. I've I've gotten to know Jerry O'Grady and mm -hmm. you know, through email and one 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 meeting last winter. Yeah. Um, and those you know those conversations will continue, but Jerry is not lunging at, at the opportunity to figure something out, and I'm not going mm -hmm. to push him on it. Yeah. Um, and of course, as you can see on the map, it's 40. Whatever it is, over four thousand. Mm, yeah. So yeah. it's it's a yeah. you know it's, it's, a, 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 it's a brand new road and it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a heck of a path. The yeah. topo, the topo is not bad, although you know, the race taking that. a look and um, <laughs> have to figure yeah. out just just how challenging yeah. it would be to bring a road in there. And there is also the factor of ongoing, um, you know, separation or what's the word. Um, Wildlands, breaking up the wildlands for wildlife movement and such, right. and mm -hmm. to make another road when there's already a road that kind of does the same thing. I can see the the right. the fact of that's a little to be considered redundant and maybe um, you know excessive. It would make it easier for future subdivision if you did have that access from Bethel Mountain Road coming in there but that's that's not your purpose and that's not our guiding well and unfortunately it's not a legal either. option until yeah until it's, it's not a frontage right? yep 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 so what's your time frame what's you know you um what's your what's your schedule well i think that we um uh you know i think next Next summer, the the thought is to see if we can't make good progress on septic and well, and mm -hmm. you know, set up a maybe a couple of nice tents, and then the following summer we would start to see uh, we start to think through construction. Yeah, it's not it's not crazy to think we'd start next summer, but it seems especially given how, how slow supply chains are moving. Right, right. It might be it's gonna be a hard, beneficial to wait. Hard road out. So I think, you know, it's it's allowing improvement without reclassification, or I suppose perhaps reclassifying as class four and allowing me to do the improvement under that. Um, we have a, a class for private road maintenance permit and policy. I don't know if that extends to legal trails also. I doubt it. I think it's just specifically the class four. So so right now we don't even have a vehicle in place to, to go ahead and say yes you could do that. But that's you know um, that and I, I didn't presume that, that if yeah. it was if it was class four that, that you would maintain it. Um, right. Right. Don't plow it. Right. My understanding is that a class four road is essentially anything that is in class three, 
and the town is not in any way obligated to maintain or block. Except for um, control erosion. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you know, perhaps improving the trail with, with no reclassification, which, was, which to me would be ideal, um, might, might be something you'd consider. Is um, the Beckers uh, abutting landowners as well? Larry, you give me a tax map. I think I have it here somewhere. Um, well, they could I be. Maybe they could be now, but I don't they, think they are. I don't think so. It's possible. No, so possible, but I don't wouldn't think so either. I don't think I think so. it might I don't be just think they cross that thing. road once it comes up from Jerusalem. I think it's like the cross the so many. They own just the other side of that road to, where we go up through the Hooper Hall. Yeah. They own like twenty feet down. The marker's right there and it runs right down to that road. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't get that far. Yeah, there Come. could be some parcel that know just that. touches but yeah. she now you got better eyes than I. I can't read that yeah. from my life. She owns yeah. the Frank's property on Hooper Hollow now too. Yeah, she does. Right, but that's down below or something. Yeah, that that he already owns up through there. Yeah, that doesn't the bus property sure. there. Yeah. Is the bus park property still out? Cool. By the way, I'm, I don't know. I'm a bit confused as to whether Jerusalem Hill is class three or four because it, 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 Vermont Roads has it as <laughs> as kind of both. It's got it's got a section of class four. Well, there's some four in it. I I talked with the road foreman and he went up, and he's under the impression that the class four starts somewhere this side of Stuart Brown's home. Is his idea? It doesn't even go to the end of Stuart Brown's property. Huh. So the class three. So I don't. He was unsure, and we'd have to check on that again. He drove it out there one day and looked at it, and I didn't go with him, but that's what he told me, and I'd have to look at it again with him, I think, in order to see what's going on. Um, so that's all I can tell you on that. Does that help at all, the town map? No, it just shows that it's gravel. <laughs> yeah, the other map in the, in the office is a better map there, and it shows a lot different. Yeah. But it, it, when John drove it out from the road, it's pretty hard to get it exact, I'm sure, with just mm -hmm. a truck. So you'd have to really look at it. I mean, we pretty much go up there and turn around with the truck now, no. but it's not may not be classified as Class 3 right. up at where we turn around. But it's pretty much built a class three there, but it's and, it, and it's been treated as class uh, yes, three for, <laughs> for, 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 all, for a long for time. For a long time. Yeah, forever, yeah. for, yeah. forever, ever since they got machines. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I don't know if the reclassification there is that big a deal. It would, the real part would be where the where the issue of going up the mountain there is really that's the mm -hmm. issue. So you've got that steep mountain from the Jerusalem hillside, but then you've got a substandard culvert on the other on the north side that is on South Hollow. On South Hollow mm -hmm. Lane, yeah, yeah, which, yeah, on, which would be yeah. So there's very and it's and it's longer. Yeah. So it's um and, and wetter too. And wetter. Steep steep on one side and wet on the other. <laughs> And the other thing I would add in, in terms of going back to just improving, it's not a critical point, but just about improving the uh, legal trail is the, the only section of the road that's ever had any road-like characteristics is the first section of the road from my driveway up to the log landing where there's been some ditching in culverts because it's been used for logging Long. access. Right. And uh, after the ice storm in 98 and then the most recent logging. Once you're in the log landing and beyond, there's no road base, no ditching, no culverts. Um, the uh, soil across the field is just native you know, material uh, clay, uh, and, at, and and then the road 
as you leave the log landing, uh, there's uh, ledge and slash buried in a permanent wet spot at, at the base of the hill. Um, and uh, and then it's just a single track, right. you know, up the you know the hill, the last pitch of the hill itself. So, um, you know, it's it's it, it really doesn't have any road characteristics be, beyond the first section, you know, beyond you know my house. Uh, there's no no real road. Yeah, no I real road. Some steeper that section from the top of Jerusalem Hill up there is actually shorter. Well, the Jerusalem hillside yeah. is just never going to be a road. I mean, well, I shouldn't well, say that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you yeah. know, Bill Kent drove the mail, his mail car over it into the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was driving that road every day delivering the mail into the 60s. Do you know when they made that a trail? It was built in 1948. It was reclassified. It was. Yeah, 1948. We should have a record of that, though. Yeah, but that was a big year for reclassifying. Yeah, yeah. he did a There's lot of. Pine Gap too. Yeah. Yeah. Gilead was, like was done then too. Yeah, I'll bet it does. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I don't think we can make a decision right this, this evening. Okay. We can plow through a lot of one. details. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I will say that my, you know, my wife and I are very excited to uh, be be property owners in Rochester. We're looking forward to the the, the, the journey of making it a, a, yeah, it's a, a home a beautiful and, uh, spot and enjoying it. I sure hope we get access somewhere. Yeah, or, you will. Yeah. Or, or our plans will will, yeah. will look quite different. This yeah. is always the helicopter pad. But yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> but I would I would encourage you to um, explore that that. Um, Loop around option. It seemed like topographically, it looked, um, you know, Doable. a little more reasonable than just going straight up the road from the bottom. But yeah. um, just a, another excuse to go hike around your property. How much of the right. trail is used yeah. once you take that loop? Does it? Where does it loop off? Yeah. Um, it's pretty pretty it's quickly after. Pretty that. quickly. It's, so. it's right after Stewart's Land, really. Yeah, where where it comes off of there, and that would least affect Stewart as far as. I mean, the yeah. the, that would be. the other possibility, of course, is to come in yeah. on the legal trail, head up the legal trail, and before yeah. it becomes yeah. uh, challenging from a from a topo perspective, move east, engineer, and myself. you're going to do one switch back want to make sure mm -hmm. to get to the site. Spots of course. Here. I switch back and I still well, plow. This doesn't yeah. look so bad. Not good friends. The, they know how to do it around they know here. To, they right? know, they They're pretty good at it. Yeah. So I'm assuming the but we could there. do some options. There's some options yeah. there. No, there's but definitely a, there's a, a way to get you in there. We just want to. Well, let's work through all the options. Yeah. Right. Right yeah. We, so understand we're going to be setting a precedent in whatever we right. do. That's so the, that's the that's the big thing there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, that's a different topo. Can you send that to me? Great to have it electronically. Thank you. you. Get a chance. Or just tell me where you got it. This is, it's just the. It says it says right here. Okay. So to be continued, eh? To be continued. Yeah. Uh, thank you. For but in a positive down. way. Okay. Yeah, in a good. positive way. Yeah. yeah. No, good. Well, well I very much appreciate there. your time. This we evening. want you to build up to give you some thought and look forward to working with you to find. We solution. look forward to having you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Take care. Welcome to and I do know that Larry is going to be a good neighbor because I'm a real estate broker and he was the first one I called when it got listed. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He well, I've already enjoyed getting you my neighbor. So. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Right. Um, we've got a um, quickie to break up the meeting. We have the um, uh, North Hollow Farm lease um, up at the Severy Pit um, for a period of five years from July 1 to um, June 30th, 2022, 27, from the 22nd to the 27th. And um, 
And this is the second renewal. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I moved to enter into this agreement with the North Hollow Farm once again. I think it worked out well. I second yeah. that. All in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Okay. It was a quickie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is good to do that. Yeah. We need um. Twenty-two. We need two signatures on there. There's two lines. You don't have to. Worry. You might sign it. No, <laughs> sorry. All right. All right. Um, so um, that was a quickie. Now on to um, this next topic on the discussion on date for the high school building acquisition vote. And um, Vic is. Um, Coming here, you said what? 7:30. 7:30. So he'll be here for a second session. All right. Well, we could. I can. Uh, I can. Just, I was asked to give an update on mm -hmm. the project so far, yep. so I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to come up front so people can have to crank sure. the next round. Yeah, it's also a. My. I hear you better. What do you You're want? in a good spot. I'm in a good spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alvin Jenkin. Everybody knows me in this room. Um, so if you were at the conclusion of the feasibility study on July 13th, you will be aware of what our next steps were. Uh, there were to complete the environmental study and also to deal with the floodway slash floodplain issue and a few other things. But the most important thing right now is that we have started the process of the environmental study, the select board and the school board signed off on the eligibility site application, which, appro which approved state monies to pay for this process. Two Rivers is uh, do it, has hired a consultant, and they are doing um, the hazardous materials uh, assessment as well as the brownfields assessment. That left me with uh, uh, finding out what for the rest of the NEPA. NEPA being the National Environmental Protection Act, because this is all under that for regulation to be eligible for federal funding, uh, which is the archaeological historical um, assessment of the site. So I was uh, asking Grace Vinson, who is the state environmental officer, um, exactly what in my uh, proposal for an environmental consultant am I asking them to do? And she responded that we may not need an environmental consultant uh, for archaeological and historical uh, history because the building is less than 50 years old. So she sent the preliminary review form that was to be completed by the town, uh, which I sent on August 5th, and I brought a copy here, because that would be the first piece of actually waiving us from having to do any of that part of the NEPA. So there might have been some understanding, misunderstanding rather, about what that form meant, but that is what that form means. It in no way obligates the town to purchase the property. It is just covering that aspect of the environmental study, the historical and archeological history of the site. Um, I've completed it to the best of my ability and asked for input if I've answered anything incorrectly. It's done like all of our applications on behalf of the town as the prospective buyer. Um, the floodway and floodplain issue has been taken up by Dick Robson. He's our point person on that. Uh, and uh, he's been in touch with Dubois King, who did the original survey when we separated the property boundaries. And we, it took a while for them to get back to us. They've gotten back to us. They've assigned um, a, a person to do the survey and the LOMA, which is the letter of uh, map adjustment, to remove the sliver of the, highway, uh, the high school property that is in the floodway. The issue is not being in the floodplain. The issue is being in the floodway. And there is a sliver of the property that is in the floodway, a very tiny sliver. And so this is about removing that, which will get us out of that dilemma. So um, Nathan Cleveland from the Community Development Board has approved uh, from the balance of our feasibility planning grant funds the money to pay for that. So that's not any cost to the town. For the... the to reality. do the survey and yeah. the letter of map adjustment. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be covered with the balance that we have remaining on those funds. 
So <clears throat> it's been said that with the NEFA, there's the phase one, which is the document review, and then the results of the phase one would determine the extent of or need for a phase two, which is site testing. Well, we know we have an underground tank, so there will be most likely um, site testing around the underground tank. Uh, the town can proceed with phase one and phase two of the environmental study uh, right up to the results of phase two, which would indicate any kind of remediation and, and not buy the property. You, you are not obligated to purchase the property. Because you're not the property owner, you're eligible for the Brella program. All of these programs are very important. The school board is not eligible because they're property owner. Right. And I think that um, Dunn can speak very directly to being a property owner who discovers they have a brown field and then has to go through remediation. It's better that the town be doing this because you're not obligated in any way for remediation. And all these programs actually uh, are designed to absolve responsibility once ownership is acquired if there's any future problems with the site. So it's very important that this process be allowed to continue. Now, around the first week of August, I, I heard from Sarah Wright. She's already appointed the consultant. That consultant thought they would be wrapped up uh, in seven weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we still haven't filled out or uh, returned this uh, preliminary review form to Grace Vinson, so I don't know how much more time that's going to add to it. I hope not any more time. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, we ha I would please ask that the board reconsider and sign this off so we can do the last piece of it and then hopefully everything gets wrapped up at the same time in terms of phase one, which is very important. And having a vote in November, I can understand logically why you would do that, but if you have a vote, I don't see that you can have a vote and say so the vote says to acquire, and then you tell the school board, well, we're going to wait until the phase two uh, before we acquire. I don't think that's going to go down very well, and we would not be looked at as good faith from us. So I would advise, really, that we not have the vote until March at our town meeting, which is also a very well-attended vote, because then we'll have a chance to wrap up the whole environmental study. So that's, hello, Kitty. Um, that's what I'm suggesting. And Nick, welcome. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what I was asked to do at the public meeting to give an update on all of that. And if you have any questions, I'm going to go back to my seat. Yes. Okay. Yes. What happens if the Loma does not agree to do an adjustment? If the Loma does not agree to do the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never asked that question, but you know, if they don't agree to do the, the adjustment, then we're certainly out for any kind of federal funding. We're we're asking um, the a, the agency of natural resources would have s some say in that. Um, we're not exactly sure how long that process is going to be. Uh, we know that Du Bois and King is going to be doing their uh, their survey and their um, feet, their their footage above the floodplain. They're going to do all their assessment. But um, what if, if if it's found that there cannot be a letter of map adjustment? Um, number one, we don't know when we submit that how long it would take for that to be reviewed, studied, and granted or denied by whomever is the 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 department that would approve that and um, if it comes back denied um, doing any of these environmental studies would just come to a screeching halt. The environmental studies have already started and they're planned to be wrapped up between it's, seven weeks and that's they started in the first week of August so that's already a It go. has uh, a lot of resources and some funding attached to it the environmental study correct? Yes, and it's being paid for by Two Rivers. It's state funding that's already been approved for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And the hiring of a project manager? That's a whole, that's a whole, whole other thing. That has nothing to do with this. Yeah. Nothing to do with this. Um, okay. 
So, so let's, let's start. First off, just the issue of the, the letter that um, we hesitated on signing that because it was not, not clear, I guess, by just by reading it. It, it, it seemed like it was, um, we were, it was a semi-commitment to buy the property where we've been really holding on and now it's, it sounds like that's not, not the issue. But we were, the way it was worded in there, it was kind of um, rose some, some alarms on our behalf that we didn't want to sign something we didn't totally understand. I'm sorry we weren't yeah. here to, to yeah. further clarify that. Yeah. We weren't on the agenda, so we assumed that your agenda was full. Anyway, yeah. we, anyway we're yeah. here yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, we're here now. I mean, it's still, the whole environmental study would be a mute point if the floodplain issue is not remedied first. Well, not, a mute not, point. not really, because the um, it would just be would render the access to certain funding um, federal and state right off. But the um, but it's still um, the information gathered would still be valuable to whoever does something with that building in the future. We were very much encouraged or not that do what they can or cannot do with the building in the future. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any sense not to do it. It really doesn't because you can say, well, what if it doesn't so we shouldn't do this? I mean, we have to proceed on all of our exploration to even find out if the property is viable for development at all. I mean, it, it's one thing to go through HUD money. It's another thing to go through private money. It's just information that's, all, that's only going to inform us. The town yeah. doesn't have any earmarked money in its budget for any of this funding. So right. if if we make commitments that would end up costing us money, we don't have any of that funding in our budget. No. So going down the road, if we have spent money thinking that the LOMA will work, um, we could be on the hook for that funding if it if it doesn't. If it doesn't come no, out. I don't well, I'm thinking further down the road, down the environmental study, when you get into phase two, is there funding for that? The phase two is the site testing, mm -hmm. and there is, and our site testing very specifically is going to be around that underground tank, and there is grant money for that. That we've been told from multiple that sources that is not a problem. That's even right. Even if we're in a floodplain. Yeah, it, we've been told okay. that is not a problem. I'll check with Josh Hanford on that because he was pretty clear about how there would be no state funding and then Grace was the one that mentioned that there was no federal funding for the floodway floodplain. So Patty, if you would like to put your very specific questions in writing and get them to us, mm -hmm. we will get the very specific answers, mm -hmm. all right? Because it seems like whatever I'm saying isn't computing in terms of an answer to you. So if you could just put it down, and I will put sure. it out there to Two Rivers, to, to Josh Hanford, to Nathan Cleveland. Those are all, these agencies are all working with us with, with a very optimistic attitude that we are not dead in the water because of the floodway. Okay. And so we have already signed papers authorizing moving forward with the environmental Before review. Before this information came out. True. Authorized True. It before the flood wave, flood plan but the issue. paper that she's asking us to sign now is actually, um, it's basically um, to waive, to waive the, another whole testing process. So historical, uh, I, historical document. document. So I, I don't see any reason, you know, not to, not to do that. Fine, you know, I, 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 I don't, just, I don't see it as triggering any, any. Any, any financial uh, any repercussions financial, for no. the town? I mean, that's the thing I want to stay away from until the town votes to buy the building. Yeah. I, I think if they want to buy the building, they should. And if this group can, wants to continue going yeah. forward, maybe yeah. they should put a coalition together and buy the building themselves. We There is no, no liability to the town at this point. The property is not owned by the town. The property is owned by the school district. The school district bears sole responsibility for the, the results of the environmental study. Now, you might say, well, we've heard from environmental uh, assessments that the previous owner could be possibly liable. Well, the previous owner of the school uh, building was the school Rochester School District. 
The Rochester School District is non-existent. So therefore, and even though it's the same voters, mm -hmm. there is no liability to the town of Rochester because it was the Rochester School District that owned the property. And that's been said clearly. We don't have any liability going forward. In fact, to me, I wouldn't even understand why we wouldn't go forward finding all the information to inform the voters 100% of whether this is a good thing to do or not a good thing to do. And then we still have the liability being one of two towns in the school district. We do not get away from the liability of this building. We are not immune from it. But in terms of what your concern is as a select board, the town is not liable. We do not own the building. It's in our village center. <clears throat> It'll impact us. Whatever becomes of it will certainly impact us but we do not have liability until we take ownership, which is why I'm encouraging you to delay the vote till March. That's what I'm encouraging. So with no liability, we will go forward with no uh, obligation to contribute to the heating of the building this winter. If that's your position, however, uh, and that was something that we were gonna discuss later with you all, um, you know, we understood, speaking with Erica Hoffman Keis, or Keis Hoffman, I think it's Hoffman Keis, mm -hmm. that the school board is liable for the upkeep of the property because they are the owners of the property. Um, we have said that we are trying to do this mutually, that we're trying to work together for an outcome that benefits not only the school district, but also the town. And so even the issue of who heats the building that is something that should be fully discussed. After all, as a member of the school board, we are paying, I believe, don't quote me, but I think it's two-thirds of, the, of the, the school heat because we are the larger town in, the, in that district. So if the town is clear that they do not want to contribute anything towards this season's heating, then we have to go back to the school board and see what other way we can do it. And we can also raise private funds for that, which is, I mean, last year, it was the public trustees that I approached after speaking to this board uh, about the fifteen thousand dollars for the, that the uh, the school board was making the condition by which they were going to make that building accessible to the consultants, right? And as I understand it, they contributed the fifteen thousand dollars. So I don't think that it was a problem last year. If it's a problem this year, we'll go about looking for funds for it. Um, before we get into the heating, let's, um, Terry? That's what my question was. That's what your question was. Because heating's going to be double this year what it was last. It's yeah. five bucks a gallon. We understand yeah. it's five yeah. bucks a gallon right, right now, now. Yeah. because they purchased it at five bucks a gallon. Yeah. But the heating prices are going down. So let's go back to the, 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 the question on the table about are you guys okay with signing off on this form that will waive the requirement for the historical? As, as long as there's no obligation financially to the yeah, town. Yeah, if, which if it there's, doesn't appear to be. If, if what yeah, they're so saying it's, is... It's utilizing our, our, our money through grant funds anyway, right. so it is coming out of our pocket, but that's it's not coming out of the Rochester budget park pocket, just the your regular... When you say taxes. out of our pocket, you mean as taxpayers? Yeah. So is so is everything, including so everything. is everything. That's why we nice to tighten our belt whenever we can. Um, I just hope that. If, if excuse me, um, if you're going to sign something, could you be a little more specific about what it is that you're actually signing? I'm sorry to interrupt, but we we already signed it. No, so. we didn't. This oh, is the one that right. we didn't didn't this one sign. Did, so yeah. this is. I'm going to. Um, move that we sign the uh, Vermont Community Development Program Housing and Community Development Board Section 106 Preliminary Review Form Community Development Block Grant CDBG Home Investment Partnership Program and National Housing Trust Fund comes from the Federal Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development HUD. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 um, NEPA requires that federal agencies such as HUD take into account the effect of their projects on any historic property, including historic buildings and archaeological sites. <coughs> to start the review process, please complete this form and submit it with the information requested below. So this is basically um, 
Yeah, the um, the uh, historical to evaluate whether we need to have the historical. Make sure there's no Indian burial ground. Indian burial, no. So, so, so move. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I move it. Pat, you're abstaining or? I'm not saying I. <laughs> not saying I. Okay, well, two out She's of three, opposed. I guess we go. She's yeah, opposed. That's about it. All right. Well, there's um, no financial obligation to the community of town. I can't vote against it at this point. But I'm not going to be easy down the road. We you know that. Actually, I am not, um, not seeing exactly where they want. Um, Do you know where he signs? He can't. He on the last page, I believe, down below. On the last page down below, it says Department of Vermont Division for Historic Preservation. Four. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah. <coughs> All right. There you go. I still think we hold Tony. it. Hold it in March. Thank you. In March? Yep. I think that makes sense. Um, I don't care as long as we don't have to heat the building. <laughs> Yeah, right. you said March, no. did you? <laughs> I'd, I'd rather do it in November, but... It makes sense to do it in March, time meeting. Yeah. We can mail out ballots then, too. Yep. Um, as much as I'd like to see it over with. What do you think? Before that. Yeah. Well, you, you run the elections, <laughs> yeah. so you do have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. March won't be a bad deal for you, will it? No, and the whole point of this has well, been to gather as much information as we could, so that we could march make we'll sense. We'll have time to warn it to and all okay. that, so. So would the vote happen at town meeting, or would it be a separate election? I think it'll be a, an Australian ballot election, it should be, mm -hmm. and we would probably look at mailing ballots out to everyone so that they can make an honest <laughs> assessment and go from there. I and think that's probably... written summary of... All the information that we have at that yes. point. We're right. Yeah. In the town, yeah, I totally agree with that. That's as much information we can even yeah. distribute with the ballot. Yeah. Exactly. The town would pay for the mailing of that and all of that? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. We'll have to. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to come up with some funds on doing it somehow. We, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so, um, what else? <laughs> oh, Tony, sorry. Had hand up. Yeah, I, I think it's really uh, kind of short-sighted not to at least take a decent look at the value of that property to a town. Uh, there's the auditorium, there are other parts of it. If only we looked even at that much. And of course it costs money. There isn't much. It doesn't cost money. But to take a very negative attitude this early in this uh, thing is is really very, very short-sighted, I think. It's been four years. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Rob? This isn't the first so year I've been doing it. I had a, a two questions. One is, is there a plan if the vote is no? Um, the, school, the school keeps the building. Well, but the building's not going away. The costs aren't going away. The, school, the problem's not the, going away. The, the right. problem... It, but is that the answer? The, the, if they vote no, then it's the school board's problem, and that's, that's it. The biggest thing I have with it, Rob, to be honest with you, is if the town elects to buy this building, mm -hmm. and we go forward with this, whatever it is, and it fails, and we dump four or 500000 into it, and we're left with a decision on what to do with this property, and the answer is going to be, of all things, we're going to have to tear it down. That's the worst case scenario. No but so with no grants for that, so you're looking at by the time this goes through, you're looking at dumping five hundred thousand taxpayer money into it, and in five years maybe looking at having to tear it, bond it, and tear it down anyway. So then you're looking at a two million dollar bond in the end. So. That's the worst case scenario, I understand, but you plan for the, you know, you hope for the best, but you plan for the worst. So to me, it makes more sense for a group to get together and purchase the property directly from the school board, leave the town out of it, and go forward with their plan. And if it fails, 
the taxpayer money is not into it, and then we have to make a decision on what to do with the property. And that's the way I look at it. And the, Tony, if you perceive me as being negative, that's okay, but that's the way I look at it. Okay. And I don't think we have a choice with that. And I'm all favored to Catherine and Vic. They put a hell of a lot of time into this, and I respect that greatly. But I do think if there is a group that really wants to purchase this thing, that's what they need to do. Deal directly with the school, do all this stuff, leave the town out of it. And that's the way I feel about it. So, and I, I'm, you're not gonna convince me any other way. Even if the town votes to purchase this building, I probably won't be involved with it at all because I'm against it. So, um, the other question I had is, uh, is there a plan to inform the voters about the entire landscape of what we're looking at here? That's is is there a plan? And I mean, what I mean, and I, and I don't want to preach about this, but I stood up at the last uh, uh, town meeting and made a public spectacle of myself mm -hmm. asking for uh, transparency on the part of this project, and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And now here we are today, and we're talking about downstream making a vote on this. This is very, very complicated. No, I know. Extremely complicated. And, and, and there has to be more to this than this report. Uh, you know, the people, voters in this town, the people that I talk to, most people have the thinnest understanding of what we're looking at here. So and I'm asking, I'm asking, I know everybody, mm -hmm. is that if we're looking at a vote with the kind of money we're talking about, people have to really know the entire landscape of facts, good news and bad. That's and I'd like somebody to have a plan for that. That's why we were just saying when we send out the ballots for this vote, it will also go with the the information packet with the, everything up to date and everything that we gather right up to that day before. If, if I got a thing in the mail day before the vote and it was, you know, well, eight pages you know, <laughs> and I, you know, I, to, well, I, I think if you, if, given the gravity of this, that there, that there, be, there should be more, either more public meetings, there should be more information. I've on the porch forum twice in the last week. Yeah, to I'm, touch base with uh, a, a media that touches a lot of uh, Rochester people. So uh, uh, we're, in, we're throwing it out there as much as we can to have people come in and participate. In my view, this is every bit as important as informing people about COVID. I mean, I, this, I mean I, I'm a little surprised. This is such a big deal, at least in my mind. The, the cost, the risks, the, the opportunity is such a big deal that I, I don't feel like it's getting the kind of informational voltage that it should be. And I saw the stuff on front page one, but in a way there is this, you know, this, this expectation that people are going to do the work to come and go to the websites and find it. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. And, and the, they're not going to show up for the meetings and, and one day there's gonna, they're going to have to take a vote. And you can't force them to it. But there is a link you on You were at our feasibility study meeting. I was. I was yeah. on Zoom. There is a link on the town website right on the front page to information about the study. I mean, it's we can't, and you're not going to force everyone to, to delve into this, you know, who can make it, um, I mean, here we are talking about it again on Zoom and the yeah. room, you know. And how many so, times in the last four years? You know, but, uh, well, yeah. when you say that it should be like as public as COVID was, like, do you think there needs to be more frequent mailings about this or well, like, what do you during covid there was a, a, a going website there were mailing and a lot we of mailings funding there, for that you know yeah. well i'm just a, I, i'm all of you the, i understand everything you're saying it's mm -hmm. absolutely true i'm not arguing with that i'm just saying that if it, for most of the voters most of the voters do not understand the gravity of this the potential gra how complicated it is what the history we is don't either, actually. you know yeah. it's very complicated uh, and and um and there has not been an effort to inform people, in my view, and, and most of the people I talk to, it's been insufficient. You know, it's been, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I think somebody, I think somebody ought to ought to make make a plan that says this is what we're going to tell them. Here's how we're going to tell them. Here's the schedule plan to do it. Because if you don't do that, as we saw from the last time I had this tantrum, uh, <laughs> it doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. So I, I don't want to take everybody's time up. I think this is vitally important to the voters and, and a hard job of work. And if you're going to ask people to, to make what sounds like a pretty easy decision, should we buy the, the, the building or not, when there's so much emotion invested in it, 
It's somebody's duty to inform them, and I'll, I'll put. This has been one step forward and two steps back, right through the whole process. So to have something solid that you can stand on a platform and say, "This is what we know." As soon as we think we know something, something comes along to, you know, set you back a little bit. So you really didn't know it all. So it has been a complicated process for us, and we don't want to plant seeds of bad information either and lose credibility. So um, as soon as we have something solid, now we have to go through this environmental study, which is going to be months gone by again. Um, and uh, meanwhile, we do have a lot of impatient people that uh, don't understand the process of the wheels of government, which turn slowly or backwards. <laughs> and uh, but we are, we're trying to put that out there. We're trying to put it out there. But the the problem said. is that it's, it's that that it's um, not ended by 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 a vote of of the town to buy because we are the buyer and the seller, mm -hmm. and so. <laughs> the problem doesn't go away, go away, and the, go it doesn't. It, you may think it goes away for the select board, and <laughs> and I respect that, but it doesn't go away for the taxpayers, because we, if we, we may not, we may it may go away as, as buyers, but, but it doesn't. But but we also still own the building, so. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. It, 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 it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's not. It, it, if, 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 it, if it was simple enough that it would end, if you vote no, <laughs> it's just the beginning. <laughs> I do have someone on Zoom. Go ahead, Mitch. I would just like to um, rebut Rob a little bit as far as information that's available and out there. There have been public meetings. Everyone has been informed about them. There were questions and answers. Anybody who was wished to know about it could attend. Nothing has been opaque about this. It is a very complicated process. So as Patty said, you know, it, things do change along the way, but none of that has been kept secret from anybody. And I believe that both Vic and Catherine have really gone to great ends to make sure that people the, that the town knows about the information. Uh, the meeting that we had, what, a month ago or so, it was open to everybody. It was advertised uh, to all the forums. And if someone chose not to come, that is not because there was not an effort to put this forth. So I just really feel like there have been many opportunities and Catherine and Vic and anybody on the committee is available to answer any question for anybody who wishes. You can come to any one of the meetings and participate. Just listen in. It is not a closed door situation. And what Catherine and, and uh, is really making an effort to do is to see that as much information as possible is available so everybody can make an educated vote on this. They know what they're doing. They know the ramifications behind it. And I'm sorry, there is no guarantee in life. So Frank, you're right. It may not fly in five years, but we, we are a community that has an aging population, but we also have a lot of young families coming up through. And if we don't build for the future, I'm not sure how we're gonna keep anybody here. So I feel like the efforts that are being made to put something together that could be viable for the future of the town is a worthwhile exploration. And so far it hasn't cost the taxpayer any money. And, and the amount of effort that's going into see that grants and funding is available and and received is tremendous. And all of that is with the intent that this does not cost the taxpayer any more money than it absolutely has to. So I think there's a real conscientious effort to, um, to have this come through at the as little cost as possible. And yes, there will be costs, but there's also would if it comes through, it could be a tremendous benefit to the town. 
And so, Rob, I, I challenge you on this bit that this is opaque because I've been in all of these uh, meetings and there has been nothing opaque about any of them. And the information is there for anybody who wants it. You just have to come to the meetings. Participate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah, thank um, you. Um, Mitch, yeah. Um, Mitch, this is Vic. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I, I appreciate your comments. I want to just talk about the communication side just for a second. You know, we learned in the COVID, the peak of COVID, that you had to meet people where they are. You cannot expect people to just automatically go on to the website. And we did a lot of work with putting, pushing out. Uh, mailed uh, newsletters, which were pretty effective because they went to every home on a regular basis. We could, we could shape our message on two sides of a piece of paper. And if we hadn't done that, I think it would have been a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. So, you know, I totally agree with the notion of doing something like that and not on the day before a vote is <laughs> decided. Um, all the other things you said are, are absolutely true, Major. I mean, the meetings are open, they're not opaque. Public meetings are certainly open and available. But I think we have to meet people where they are with such a complicated and weighty kind of issue. So we do need to do more. I, I, I certainly agree to that. Julie, you had something? I do. Yeah. Uh, Kristen and I put together um, a form that we sent out with the taxes. And basically that was um, to gather in all emails of all residents mm -hmm. in our town. And it kind of... It was a basis to like any kind of an emergency or any kind of notice or any kind of information that needs to get out to the to the taxpayers or to people and i just feel like this might even be a great way to send out an, an email to all of them it goes out as one email and ask if anybody wants to be on their ma on this mailing list we can certainly send without having to do all of that through paper we yeah. could do it through a mass what, email what proportion of households did you yeah. I wouldn't even dare to guess. Um, it's been it's pretty lot. popular. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, re I, I don't know. There's I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's so great. are you thinking like a separate, a separate? Well, like, I'm thinking if we out send out an, an email through that mass yep. mm -hmm. like, and asking for anyone who wants to be on a distribution, a distribution for okay. to email back and then we have them all separated out and yep. the people who are and really want to collect that information. Right, because we can say that. I think that's a great idea. We, we did, I, Robert, Vic, and I were all on that COVID task force, and we chose the printed yes. mailer because not everybody had email, not everybody oh, yes. has access to online. So we decided that that oh, yeah. the pandemic was a significant issue, and I think it cost about $200 of mailing, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, the town did pay for this and we were doing regular mailings uh, and we started early on it. Um, I'm up for whatever the town wants us to do about this, but I do think the starting with an email list is terrific. Mm -hmm. At least polling who wants to get updates, even putting out some sort of a sign up sheet at the town office, you know, so that people can either by mail or by email receive updates on the high school project. That's a good idea. Let me uh, just say thank you, Ms., for your honest uh, uh, vision of what's going on. But I think it's important, as Vic said, if you're counting on people to come to you to get the information, you're going to fail. There's a reason that, you know, Becca Balance sends four cards to your house <laughs> hoping you'll pay attention to one of them. There's a reason in advertising that they beat you over the head with this stuff. Uh, I, w I, would I would go back to the uh, merger, the time of the merger, when everybody in town needed to be told, and there were a whole series of pretty uh, uh, active meetings or, where things were explained and uh, uh, because it was so important. I think this is more important than the merger, potentially. I mean, the risks here are so great, the potential is so great, uh, and, and I just, people that I talk to, I am not having people say to me, oh, and, and I'm totally informed. They are not totally informed. And when I first moved to this town, not to, not to preach, uh, my impression was there was a philosophy of public information in Vermont. And the philosophy was you warn a meeting, you have a meeting, and if you don't show up to the meeting, too bad for you. <laughs> you know, it wasn't the duty of the town to communicate to the people. It was the duty of the people to come and get the information. That doesn't happen anymore. That doesn't happen anymore. The, the, the number of people that show up in meetings is small. If you want to get information to these people, you're going to have to work at it. You've got to make it a job of work. You've got to go to where they are. I, th and I think this is really true. 
Um, and, and I'm not knocking Midge for this. I think Midge makes a, makes a good point, but that's the end of my tantrum. So um, there are people running campaigns have campaign funds. We're talking about just heating high school. I mean, I, I'm happy to do this, but, but so far all the, the, um, the percentage of uh, costs for, for feasibility study and, and the matching funds have come from the committee out of our pocketbooks. So, I mean, I think it's time to start some sort of a campaign for even this level of development, even prior to acquisition, and to put that out there. Because if there's people who want this information in a lot of the publication forms, or in all the forms, it's going to take money just to do it. But it also takes money to do a lot of the other aspects of this, too. And we, the committee have been, has been doing this ourselves, <coughs> paying for the money. And there, there, comes, there comes a time when that may dry up, you know? <laughs> So, just putting that out there. <clears throat> so, um, that's the uh, discussion on high school building acquisition <laughs> vote. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank um, we've got a um, um, paving contract um, proposal from Kingsbury, and this is for the um, saw cut edges and remove existing asphalt from area discussed. Area discussed being the down by the town garage and the um, the storm water um, remediation project that. Um, was placed in the ground um, through the efforts of the um, partnership, the White River partnership, um, that included redoing the paving over the stuff they put in the ground. But in reality, that we need to address the wider area that I, that is a part of, which has been falling apart forever. So we're looking at a bit of thirty-seven thousand one hundred dollars for that paving. Basically, that paving will run from <clears throat> where the where the tanks are for the septic field. It'll run about 12, 8 to 12 feet. I'm not sure exactly how wide, all the way through. And after the street for the winter sand, it'll be all new pavement there. the The project itself called for 25 feet from the building out, which is, takes in about a third of the street that's there. And it goes from the edge of the south side of the building to where the catch basin is on the north side of the building. But if we don't do the whole yard, it makes the project moot, really, because you can't yeah, channel the water, and it's just going to make a mess in front of the place. Uh, this bid is for taking out the old stuff to make it slope towards the drains uh, that are in place. The reason why the original contract didn't have this included is the partnership does not do paving. And the only reason why they were doing the 25 feet was because it was originally paved and where they had to run their pipes and everything. Uh, I talked it over with John uh, Cooter and we all felt that it was the right thing to do is to make it work because it's a $140,000 project that the, the partnership put in down there um, with the cost to the town was only the work that we did ourselves, which was uh, take out some material and bring some material in. So that was just our cost. And so this paving piece would would be our cost at 37000 John and I talked about using some of the paving budget that he has set aside for this year, and we thought we'd supplement some ARPA funds in it. So we haven't figured out what exactly, we how we would split that, but we will definitely do that. And I, I think it needs to be done in order to make the project complete. Are you moving to approve that? I am. Well, second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Do you have anything to say? 
Did you want to I say was, something? Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking of having a little discussion about it. <laughs> 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 speak up. <laughs> speak up quicker next time. It doesn't you seem like to matter. She was listening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's Seems like we aren't putting stuff out the bed like Gilmer policy puts the thing. That that was part of the process. Uh, I think is Kristen on there. Uh, the guy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Maybe he could speak um, to that. Pelletier. Yep. Yep. Hey everyone, I'm Christian Pel Pelletier, and I work for the White River Partnership. Um, this whole project was put out to bid um, to Kingsbury. And so this additional paving um, would go under the scope of the the entire project that was put out to bid and in, um, in earlier this year when Kingsbury bid on it. So it'd be an increase the scope to the work that that's being completed right now. So what are you saying? As it it was put out to bid, and this is just not really. in, increasing the no, scope. Not really. Not really at all. No? It's an extra. She should gone out to bid. The black is all together. A different situation on what Kingsbury bid on. Kingsbury bid on what was there, and now they're adding to the whole project. And that should have gone out. Don't forget Pat wants to speak. Pat, speak up there. I'd like to know uh, a little bit more of a percentage of the ARPA funds, and I'd, I'd if Larry has that information, where do we stand with our expenditures so far? You're asking me. Yes, I am asking you. Oh, funny. I was actually oh. thinking of asking you guys. <laughs> um, I I think that we're up in the seventy-five thousand. We're right about a hundred. Yeah, right about a hundred. Um, right, right about a hundred right now. Yeah. So I know that we had right. um, a, a kind of a, a pie set aside for ARPA funds, and I just want to make sure that well, it, what part of the pie may be suffering from this. Yeah, I, I, it's un unclear what my uh, my exact role is and longer in, in it, but um, uh, I haven't had any real uh, any real any recent update from the select board on. Uh, some of your decision making on where you're spending it or plan to spend it. So okay, that's a discussion so, I'd be happy to have. Yeah, um, okay, let's do that. Yeah. Um, just so that when we are faced with the next vote decision, um, we're, we're standing on some firm ground about what we're spending, especially for the ARPA funds. And just so you guys know, as a board, there's like currently 61,000 left of the first two installments after that um, 52 and 5 that we just used for Weaver. We used it with about 61. So we got so about 67. So the 37 would come out of that 61. Not all of it. We how take much? Some, However, well, we have we got to sit down. And, 50, 50. I've got to sit down and talk to John. Yeah, I'm thinking. We haven't something received like this year's portion. Yeah. Of the right. second half yeah. should be due. I would so expect sure. any day of I think sure. it's coming yeah. very soon. Very soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of late from last year. Yeah, it is. Still doesn't mean you need to spend it without getting prices. I it's understand that. Question. I agree with that. One of the things, the problem is, though, you have two different pavers down there, too. And you're going to run into an issue with that. If there's a mess up, you've got no one to back. You know, you can't go to one and say, this is your fault because you didn't do a good job. And they're going to blame the other guy. So you're going to be faced with that, too. And that's one thing we talked about with John and I talked about with that. Still gives them open. quickly clarify that the paving in front of the, the building, the 25 foot width and 125 feet, is going to happen regardless. That's part of the current um, non expanded scope of the project. And the project's at the point where they're ready to pave that area um right now so regardless of this decision that that would be what would would happen moving forward that would or would not be what it, it would it, it would, it would. Mm -hmm. it will. that's what is kingsbury does their own Contract paving with kingsbury. no sorry does kingsbury do their own paving no 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 they they subcontract out their paving 
Do, we don't. We wouldn't know who they would be using, so we could contact them directly. I can get that information um, for you. Yeah, I believe the paver was present um, and met John when they, he walked the site to create a quote. Um, but we, I can I can get that information. No. Yeah. It, it would just probably be nice to know who the paver would be in case there were issues in the future. Yeah, we've already we'll learned to do it, so it's it's a mute point. And, it's ten grand less um, for someone else. Just for for when we first the White River Partnership explored this project, um, as Frank said, the the funding source doesn't allow paving. It's a uh, DEC Clean Water Block Grant, um, but we still. When we first explored this and it was either 2018 or 2019 thought paving the whole um garage would be a good idea so we got a quote then which i know it's outdated but to, it was thirty five thousand dollars to pave the entire town garage um parking area so for, just for reference that's um a quote we got a few years ago um just just looking at options but at that time it was, it was decided that um the town uh would it be able to support that so we just moved forward with the grant funded portion of the paving okay so it was in the original agreement to have done the whole parking lot no no it, it never was we just explored it to have the information to bring to the town as a potential okay. option with the project when we okay. first um, yeah, yeah. Pitched it, but at that time there weren't funding sources like ARPA and, and such around, um, so we decided to make do with the, just the the grant funding that we had to do the small path. All right. So, moving right along, um, we have Joan on Zoom here. Yep. What you got for us, Joan? Um, I'm just sort of taking care of a few remaining loose ends because um, my last day is uh, this coming Friday. So I've got the contract for the tank removal that's out for signature. So you should have that back pretty soon. Um, I did some work on the, the paving issue with the town garage. I just want to um, make a comment on that. We really um, should be looking at this as a change order to an existing project as opposed to something brand new, which is something that we do encounter from time to time when we do projects. And under those circumstances, duh, we don't typically, you know, insist that it goes out to bid because you're in the middle of the project. And you're not horses in the middle of the stream with contractors or anything. So I understand your concern about wanting to make sure, uh, you know, the pricing you're getting is, is the right one, but, uh, just want to make that point. Um, a summary probably tomorrow. Uh, remaining information that I want to get over to you regarding uh, what's left for reimbursements from FEMA, um, which includes FEMA refunding and as well as the matching amount that comes from the state. Uh, so you'll have that by the end of the week too. Uh, I'll be handing off my laptop on Friday. Um, and um, otherwise, I'm pretty much done. Well, thank you for your years of work there. Yeah. Um, Pat, you're raising your question. Uh, Joan, did you have the opportunity to meet with the, the gentleman from Skate Space? Yes, I did. Yes, I, I met did. with them with them was a week was before, a week last, before uh, last, uh, and, uh, and Norm, and, Norm, and was able and was able my point of view, point on, of view timing on timing for their fundraising, for their fundraising uh, because uh, apparently the, the main the grant that they'd be applying to from the state, state, I forget, I forget which, uh, the name of the program, the, program, the recreational the program, program um, requires um, that they have the matching funds in hand when they submit the application. Uh, I admire uh, their admire efforts their to try and to get, get $25,000 by September 10th, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, that, that would be a real squeaker. Um, um, and so and I advise, advise them to, them to um, um, instead of submitting, of submitting an application, an application that, that would be rejected, because they don't have the funds in hand, 
that uh, they, get their, they get their, you know, their, their ducks more their in a row, in a row and, and submit a really submit good, really good uh, achievable, achievable, approvable, approvable um, grant, application grant application to the state, to the state in the next fund next funding, round, funding round, which would be next would year, be next year. Um, which um, I, I which think I, they took I think my they advice took my on that. Advice on that. Um, and um, also gave them some, gave them some tips, tips, tips on, tips on uh, bidding, bidding, which is, which you know, not you something they're going to be doing right, right, away. right away. And also and places also to look places for other uh, funding, uh, sources, funding sources to supplement what they've got already. They've got already. So I think so that was, think useful, that was to them. useful to them. Yeah, it sounds like wonderful guidance. Thank you. Well, now's your chance if you have any final words of wisdom to share with the select board and from your your um your podium there oh well i don't i don't know it uh i think the, the wisdom's all on your side i admire all <laughs> and the work you will be doing um and it's been great working with you for the past seven plus years well you'll have to come and do some ice skating and watch the storm water go down the drains and Watch and the don't forget floor. to use Bethlehem Mountain Road. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> Bethlehem. <laughs> Every time I can, every chance I get. Yep. All right, well, thank you, Joe. Okay. Um, Tony. Uh, once again, I'd say keep reading the paper. There's several mm -hmm. things that are going on. And uh, we will have a booth at the uh, Harvest Fair. Um, main things, I guess. All right. All right. Good. Um, don't have anybody here from the highway department. You got, I guess we've talked enough about the garage. <laughs> that covered it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other, just a couple things. Uh, there's been a request for the use of the trail over in Gilead for logging access. I plan on going over there sometime this week and just to check it out to see it's been used before i believe and and uh, it's part of uh, the gilead road uh, there is a landing there previously but i'll go look at that and also the the tank removal for the town office will be doing that on wednesday charlie's going to pump it out and i'll check on that to see how that's going and uh, Wednesday, we we'll plan on removing that underground tank. Lincoln Technologies has been notified, and Dave Harvey's going to do the work, and Charlie's going to take care of the tank. All right. Um, Terry, you got anything on the utilities front? No, well, just when, when I meet with the state tomorrow, uh, they're going to dig from front of Pierce Hall down to the Bean House and then across the road. We place the storm drain. They're going to do that storm drain, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Call me this morning. So is the, um, the state you're going to paint the hydrant black across the river to send? No, I got to go do that. Yeah. <laughs> to make what? the state happy. Yeah. <laughs> So it won't be officially a fire hydrant, it'll just be uh, That's what they say, yeah. But we can still have it there just in case. It's, it's called a flushing pipe now hydrant. instead of a fire hydrant. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where is the Across the bridge. Because it's only a six inch main. I've been fighting it for 20 years, no, so no. I gave in. Yeah. But at least we don't have to take it out, though. I sent a letter to the fire chief and told him, so we're all set. Yeah. <laughs> you sent a letter to the fire chief? You did. Oh. <laughs> no, I did. I did? And oh, Joey did. I did. Oh, okay. You were on vacation. <laughs> to keep everyone informed, there are billboard signs at the edge of town saying, grinding starts on Wednesday. So you will have traffic delays again. Yeah. But they're starting Still. down here. They're starting in Stockbridge, right? They've started everything else in Stockbridge. Yeah, so. yeah. they are starting. Yeah, they are starting there. Yeah. And they do about a mile a day. He said. Yeah. A little better, depending on how the cup is in the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 
that when you flipped the computer around, it didn't look like Jeff Gephardt is here tonight. Nope, he's not. Nope, he's not. He's spending his energy somewhere else tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the West Coast. Yeah. He's on the West Coast. Um, and in the old business, we had the um, master financial policies and for sections one, three, and four, which I looked at, but then it looks like Jim Barlow has, has chimed in with some things that he would like us to right. look at, so I guess we'll... Which I received today. So. We got that today, so we'll so, table that and, yeah. and, and look at those suggestions. All right. One more time. <laughs> yeah, one really? more time. Jeez. Yeah. Perfect. It looks pretty good. To yeah, I thought so too. Um, any other public comment from the room or Zoom? Martha has something on Zoom. Yeah. Um, I noticed that the next thing is, uh, before you close out is that you have an executive session to talk about something to do with real estate. So obviously mm -hmm. I can't attend that. So um, I, if that's okay, I will call the office tomorrow and just ask if any decision was made. Eight. Sure. Is that all right? Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, I guess I'd move to conclude this um, open meeting, part of our meeting, and um, go into executive session. Okay. Thank you all.